The energy transition is here. And it's evolving, accelerating. Demand is booming. Supply is finite. Costs are rising. Time feels more precious than ever. Because our generation is the first to feel the effects of our changing climate and maybe the last that can make an impact. From utility rooms, to operating rooms, to dining rooms, there are limitless possibilities to reduce energy waste, to realize net zero, and to emerge more resilient. Digital and electric are the formula for a more sustainable world. So this moment is our moment. The moment to lead, the moment for opportunity, the moment for action. The greatest movements are sparked by bringing things together. Ideas, leaders, technology. Let's empower everyone to make the most of our energy and resources, bridging progress and sustainability for all. The moment to make a sustainable impact is now. Please welcome to the stage, Amr Paul, President, North America Operations, Schneider Electric. Good morning. Our hope with the orbs was there were going to be no accidents, no sudden athletic endeavors. So thank you for getting through that without an OSHA recordable. Um, it is so good to be back in person. You know, you're all fantastic, and we've engaged with so many of you over the last two years in the difficult period we've been in, but nothing beats this. So thank you for making it. We are so excited to have you here. Look, we have 1,500 people here. We have many more watching in the live stream. And in that, we have customers from all segments. We have 1,000 companies that represent $4.5 trillion in revenue. They represent 8 million employees. So think about the impact they can have. We have partners and suppliers because we need to do this together. And the change ahead of us requires us to think differently. The moment is now is the theme of this event, and you're going to hear that over and over again. And what we want you to do is engage in that, challenge that idea, ask if we're moving fast enough. We have Fortune 500 companies. In fact, 20% of the Fortune 500 is here. And we have startups that want to disrupt those Fortune 500 companies. And that's great. We have companies that were founded over 100 years ago, like Hilton. This is the largest Hilton property in the world, and we're proud to be their partner. And we have companies that are still in the public sector domain and research labs. And the idea is that we all have this conversation together. What, what's most exciting to us isn't just our technology, but it's how all of you use it. You inspire us in how you make this work. Now, our challenge is to accelerate. 2030, a lot of companies here have made commitments about where they're going to be in their carbon footprint by 2030. 2030 is less than 30 quarters away. To put that in perspective, we have been in the pandemic period for 10 quarters. We have less time than we think. Incremental thinking is not going to work. We have to go much faster. And to set the stage, for that, for the technology, the challenge, the opportunity, and the expectation of leaders. I cannot think of a better speaker to kick us off. It is my pleasure to welcome our chairman and CEO, Jean-Pascal Trocois. Good morning. I must say it, it's so good to be with you. Thank you, thank you for taking some of your very precious time to be together in Vegas. Well, last time we could do that was more than three years ago. It was pre-COVID time. And if you uh, remember, so many things have happened since then. Too many screen meetings, in remote from home meetings, 
not enough in-person meetings. I've been, since I've been vaccinated and could go out, I've been on the road all the time, 18 months continuously. And as the world was opening step by step, I could meet people one by one, but nothing beats this. Being together in Vegas with 1,500 top strategic suppliers, customers, partners of Schneider Electric to take stock of what has happened in the past three years, understand how much our industries have been transformed, what is the impact on each and every of our company, and see what we can do together to face challenges and capture opportunities. And God, I mean, those past three years have been really eventful. And I want to thank you, really deeply thank you, for the way we've taken those challenges and faced those issues together. And as I speak at the moment, the situation is still far from being ideal. I want to mention, for instance, the supply chain. And I know that in this room, we have 150 of our strategic suppliers. We need more capacity. We need your help. We need your support. And I want to thank our customers who are facing also some of the issues together every day on show understanding, on collaboration in the way to solve those issues. But let's speak about what happened. In the past three years, we've been facing a succession of disruptions, numerous disruptions. Started with COVID, of course, and then we went into geopolitical tensions, which took us to probably the most severe energy crisis we've known since the 70s, and today we are in the depths of it. I would say in energy, it's probably a COVID moment where we have to revisit everything, every of the certainties on the ways of doing that we had in the past. And then with that, on the, it goes with energy prices, it goes with energy shortages in parts of the world that we are not used to it, like Europe. And then you go into other things like climate change. I think for everybody like me who traveled, a lot in the past 18 months. There is not one place in the world where I went to in the past months where there was no heat wave, drought, uh, shortages of water, problems of climate disorders like tornadoes on the tragic floods like in Florida, which happened a few weeks ago. And that happened all over the world, making our societies, our communities realize that climate change was now having a very clear impact on not only the economics of our countries and our companies, but also on our daily life. And with that is coming now on our companies the legitimate pressure of our communities on our investors, Wall Street, for our companies not only to respond to financials, but respond of extra financial on proposed solutions, real solutions to get more sustainable on fight together climate change. Anyway, you take the combination of those three disruptions, and those disruptions are absolutely major. And you have an acceleration which we had not seen before of the three topics that Schneider has been discussing with you over the past 20 years, digitization, electrification, and technologies for sustainability. So let's speak about acceleration, right? The first one is digitization. COVID has been a massive acceleration for digitization. Remember when we were all impeded to go in our factories, on sites and things, who was connected could operate, who was not connected was in the dark. And we have to realize that the episode one of the internet was the internet of people. And it changed everything in the way we live, in the way we work, the way we date, we ail cabs, we order food and everything, our life has been changed. We are now deep already into the episode two of the internet, which is the internet of things, connecting people to the environment, to the machines, connecting machines to machines. And that convergence of IoT, big data, AI, is creating a digitization of what we do all together in this room, which has not happened before. And be ready for much more, because machines have a big difference 
with human beings. They speak a lot and they generate very rich data. So we have the duty as specialists of our business to make sense of this data because data is a core foundation of any progress on efficiency. So that's the first inflection. And at the same time, we are facing a second acceleration in our industry, which is the one of electrification. Of course, and especially now, we all need all sources of energy, fossil, non-fossil, electrical, non-electrical. We need everything because we are short, as you can see, of energy, of cheap energy and green energy. But we need everything. But one thing is sure is that the world will be much more electric than it is today. And why is that? It's interesting to take a perspective about the electrification dynamics of the world. If you look at the past 20 years, the electrical consumption of the world has been growing by 5,000 terawatt hour every 10 years. Quite the same growth over the past 20 years. Now, on most of it, was due to the electrification of new places. So most of that increase of electrification was taking place in emerging countries. And actually, China was more than 50% of that world increase. Now, fast forward in the next 10 years. This will double, factor of two. We're going to go from five to 10. And then when you go from 2030 to 2040, it's going to be multiplying by four. That is really a true acceleration. But the most important for us who are in North America is that the nature of this acceleration will be fundamentally different. Here you are not speaking about more people getting access to electricity. It's going to be about the most important energy migration we've ever known. Vehicles going to electrical. Building heating systems going to heat pumps. IT on all technologies growing faster than the average of the economy on all new technologies are based on electricity. On the duty we have together as professionals of electricity in this room is to make sure that this transition, this acceleration is possible and is possible while still reducing the carbon footprint of this acceleration so that on one side, we support this major transition. On the other side, we make our planet sustainable. So look at the equation that you have here. On one side, really a COVID moment in the field of energy. At the same time, we have two major technology transition, the Internet of Things, digital for far more efficiency, electrification for decarbonization, and the combination of the two makes that we have a path for our countries, our societies, and our companies to make a future which is more sustainable. And now let's pause a moment. I think Schneider has proven, and we are proving every day, that being sustainable is very good for your competitiveness, your attractiveness, and your development. And I've been participating in the past 20 years to many debates that where people were opposing sustainability to economics and saying, I think it's wrong. Because at the end of the day, if our companies are not sustainable, if the model of our companies are not sustainable, then our companies are not sustainable. I would argue that the companies that run on a thin line of energy needs or resource needs is far more resilient on far more competitive on cost, on far more flexible than a competitor which has not made the effort to be more efficient and sustainable. So sustainability has also a very strong economic foundation. As a CEO, I've always considered that my job was twofold. Put Schneider in the places with the strongest tailwinds and make sure that we would reduce the risk that could affect our company. Making our companies more sustainable is exactly this. It's actually the strongest foundation or the strongest support to economic performance. So, I'm going to say it. The moment is now. 
The moment is now because I've been working on sustainability for the past 20 years, and there were always a debate what is the cost of sustainability and so on. But we are at a moment in history where the mid-term objective of being sustainable on going to net zero is meeting the absolute urgency for all of our companies to mitigate the rising cost of energy on where every investment in efficiency on electrification has a very close return, very short return, because price of energy is bound to be high for a long moment. And here, in the US, it's just a question of cost. But if you operate global companies in other parts of the world, it might be your license to operate. In winter, this winter in Europe, being efficient in energy will be the only way for many of our companies to keep operating. And that's not the only place. The moment is now also is that you can have ideas, but you need to have the technologies to support those ideas. And as I was saying, those inflections in digitization on electrification are happening now. The technology is already now. So what does it mean? It means that, and it's not Schneider speaking, it's the International um, Energy Agency speaking, that is saying that 70% of present carbon emission, therefore most of it energy waste, could, can be eliminated today with existing technologies of today with a great economic return because at the end of the day, it's just simply eliminating waste on an efficiency. But it goes with another way of looking at the equation of energy. And this way starts with the priority of priorities, a no regret move, which is a priority of efficiency. And the big disruptor of efficiency today in the 21st century is digitization. Digitization for energy efficiency, for process efficiency, for circularity, thanks to traceability. And even when you do projects, and many of you know, many people in this room are doing projects all the time, doing them digitally from design to build makes them much more efficient than doing it in a traditional manner. The first priority is that nobody can regret is always efficiency through digitization. The second one, and this is on the demand side, is the electrification of usages. And this, by a large amount, will be decided by consumers. They will decide to go to electric for their vehicle. They will decide to go to electric for heat pumps because it's going to be less expensive. And we have to follow that and make it possible. The parkings have to be equipped, the infrastructure has to be equipped, so all of the things have to change. So now that two actions have been done on the demand, we need to take care of the supply. And the first action on the supply is to make the grid, which is a big orchestrator of the energy transition. At the center of everything, we need to make the grid smart and make sure that this connection between demand and supply allows a maximum optimization of the system. And the last action, which is on supply, is to make sure we decarbonize supply by putting more renewable, more storage, more microgrids. And all of this has to be connected together. And why is this revolution happening now? It's because for the first time, we can connect everything from the plant to the plug. And the core foundation the blood of this transition is data. Therefore, for all of our companies, the capacity to progress, the capacity to transition comes with the capacity to put together data wherever it is from the supply to the demand affecting our companies. So that makes a world of electricity that will change everything smart on the demand side, smart homes, smart buildings, smart manufacturing, smart cities and smart infrastructures, smart grids in the middle connecting the northbound and southbound part of energy on a generation that's going to be probably much more decentralized, much more decarbonized, 
and very often very close to the point of consumption. So in this room, just to make it a little bit more practical, in this room, we all have different lines of business. We are in industry, building, data centers, and so on, but we all have one common point. We have a home or we have one apartment. So let's speak about today. I'm not speaking about futuristic thing. Let's take what is happening at that average American home, which actually is exactly the same thing as a European home, and let's see what could be the performance of a home of today with existing technologies, provided it goes electrical and digital. And it's fundamentally minus 40 to minus 60% of energy saving that can be realized on a reduction of carbon footprint of 60 to 90%, actually 100%, if you go full electrical and source green energy. On this reasoning that all of us can understand because we all have a place where we live, uh, except me because I've been on a trip for 18 months. But one day I'm going to go back to my place. But in each of the business you do, this applies. You can apply it to industries. You can apply it to buildings. You can apply it to data centers. On the average savings that you have between an average of what is existing today on what you can do today with existing technologies is 15 to 50%. And you see the other collateral benefits. I'm not even speaking about the collateral benefit you have in safety because your operators can have access to all the data in the plant. They can have augmented reality goal to go safely on plant. I'm not even speaking about your, the advantages in terms of resiliency because when you have a, you can prevent problems to happen and outages to happen. So at Schneider, we've been working with you for the past 20 years towards more sustainability, which to make it simple is towards much more efficiency. And we've come to the conclusion that a superior level of efficiency is linked to a superior level of integration. And Project after project, cases after cases, we've identified five integrations which are really material to change the efficiency of any company. Integration number one it is the one of energy on automation because you want to combine together energy efficiency on process efficiency. And anybody who runs a company knows that if you want to act on energy, you have to act on the process. And anybody who's been through COVID or through energy crisis knows that if you want to run your process, you need a very reliable, unsafe energy. So number one, making sure, and this is what you're going to find systematically at Schneider, that the equation of energy and process are always integrated. Second integration is a legacy for those who've been working with us for a long time, the legacy of transparent factory. At the age of Internet of Things, making sure that every endpoint on the shop floor, actuators, sensors, control systems, generate is connected to the cloud and making its data available to all stakeholders of the company. That's the second integration. And then you have created your data hub in which you are gathering all the data of your company, operation, assets, energy, carbon, and you can start working on the efficiency of it. From that level on, all the upper integration at Schneider are coming under the form of software, algorithm, uh, digital platforms, and all of them from that level on are agnostic. That means they can work on the data generated by Schneider systems, but more so, as we know that the history of your company has been done with multiple axes of growth, multiple geographies, sometimes by acquisition, in your company you have all sorts of control systems, all sorts of instruments, all sorts of legacy, and you need to integrate that into one digital repository. All the software we provide in integration 3 to 5 are completely agnostic. They feed from Schneider data or from anybody's data, and actually more anybody's data than Schneider data. 
So integration number three is life cycle integration, making sure that you have a digital twin of your installations from design to build to operation and maintain. And all of us in this room managing projects and installations know how many losses are happening at every transition from one phase to the next one. Number four integration is that when you've connected and you have a digital twin side by side, make sure you connect the connected and have a unified operating center so that you can leverage the scale on the whole capability of your company. And then once you've worked on the demand comes the fifth integration, which is based on the knowledge of the demand of everything happening, then you can have the best source of supply the most resilient, the most reliable, the cheapest, and the greenest that fits your needs, your very specific needs. One, two, three, four, five are those integrations that each of you can put in place either individually, one of them, or all together because they feed each other. At Schneider, when you speak with us, the two first integrations are the place of equal structure, our IoT and control plug and play architecture. As soon as you speak about agnostic software, we're going to call our sister companies at Schneider, Aviva for industry, ETAP for electrical distribution, IB for projects of constructions. And then when you want to choose the best supply, we're going to call our specialized teams in the field of sustainability services. All of this is articulated around the backbone of data, our data provided by Aviva, where everything converges and offers you a full transparency on everything which is happening in the company. That journey, which at the moment for every company is priority, I know no company in the world who doesn't have at the top of its priorities digitization and sustainability. That journey towards sustainability and digitization is one unique journey. They go together because the first pass to sustainability is getting the data available. It's a long journey, but it's a journey that can be progressive. This is something that you can start at any point or through any level of integration. But to make it possible, we've created a toolbox, toolbox of elements on there are three I want to mention. The first one, and I said it many times, the first priority is to get together all the data of your company, all the operation data, assets, operation, energy, carbon, and make sure that you get that into one specialized repository. And when I say specialized, the application that we have in industry are very specific. And to make sure that we respond to those specificities, we've been working for the past 20 years on the legacy of, of brands that you know, like Pi or like Wonderware, specialized into industrial applications and making sure that this data would be formatted, especially for the needs that we have in industrial and building applications. And take a few examples, data that can be deployed on-premise and on the cloud on an hybrid cloud, data that can be manipulated on, on managed at scale, very large scales. You are speaking about electrical networks, water networks, cities, very large factories. Data which will be contextualized, which will be formatted, which is federated so that you can run onto it programs, analytics that can be deployed at the right moment. Data that can be maintained easily all of you in this room know the difficulty to maintain operation data at scale in companies. All of this is what we are focused on. We have also, and I will repeat, made sure that this data hub is not only working with Schneider, but more so with all the legacy we, you have. So having worked on that for the past 20 years, we have more than 1,000 connectors that can help you collect and ingest all the data coming from all your control system, building control, DCS, PLCs, all of this into that repository. And based on that unique, optimized, and industrially specialized database, you can empower communities. 
your own IT developers. One thing that many people in your companies don't like is to have to call somebody to get access to develop their own software. Develop your own software with your own developers. Call your preferred system integrators. Empower your operators on the shop floor with augmented reality goal. Uh, empower your plant manager so that they can benchmark to their colleagues and go to the best level. Give selected access to your data to suppliers or utilities so that they can participate to the improvement of your systems. Deploy on this data the software you already have that can come from any supplier. But at the same time, if you want, fast forward on efficiency by deploying the integrated portfolio of software of Schneider. So first tool in the toolbox is data. The second one for all of you is to create the digital twin of your company. And we've been over the past 20 years building patiently the tool, one complete set of integrated applications so that you can integrate all digitally all the elements of your company, starting with the process, then power, of course, Schneider being Schneider, on the build. On all of this, we all realize have a very tight interaction. If you change the dimension of a machine in the process, it will change the power supply in the power system, and it will change the space you need in the place where you install the machine. You don't want to have that to do manually. Today, most of it happens manually. All of this has to be fully automated. And you want to have one thread, one continuous thread, from the time you design to the time you build to the time you operate and to the time you maintain. What we've seen also is that this need to address together process on energy has come to a completely different level in the past year due to the energy crisis. All of us have to understand what happens if there's an issue of energy in an installation on how we can act on the process to act on the energy consumption. So that is the second part of what we propose you for those who want to deploy it on fast track to a digital twin, then this integrated portfolio of software that can integrate together to build somewhere the digital twin of your own enterprise. Third point, and I will be much light on that one because this is something we've been talking to you for a long time already. It's an integrated plug and play architecture to connect your installations and control your installation, it's eco-structure. Eco-structure building for buildings, eco-structure plant for factories, eco-structure IT for data center, eco-structure grid for the grid, with the capacity to connect everything cyber secured, there again based on an hybrid cloud and on on-premise uh, data repository on the data hub. So those are the three elements which you can put together so that you can accelerate your journey to uh, your data twin or your, to your twin, to the twin of your enterprise. And you see a lot of people speaking today about the metaverse, more applied to the consumer. But when you experience what we do with Aviva, with ETAP, and our other software companies, we absolutely already today have examples, real examples, real life examples of metaverse deployment in the industrial space. You can train your operators in the digital space before sending them on the shop floor. You can assist with augmented reality your operators so that you increase their efficiency and reduce and increase the safety for them already as we speak. And you can really visit virtually most of your factories digitally by deploying the right digital twin of your installations. Data first, de deploy applications to your convenience and connect more installations thanks to EcoStructure, our IoT on control architecture. I'm going to go very fast here, but this is real, right? This is things that we do every day on people, companies are already by large in motion. Take an example in cities, Montgomery County. Uh, we have the chance to have uh, our friend here, Michael, here to, uh, from, uh, for, for this project, connecting a microgrid uh, to an electrical fleet. That's a great example. 
Nescafe, I took a lot of coffee this morning. I'm quite jet lagged. Uh, thank you, Nescafe. Uh, by using predictive maintenance, avoiding outages and saving on, on costs from that point of view, or taking the example of United Therapeutics to go to zero, to net carbon, net zero, and to make sure that we reduce uh, the carbon footprint. They reduce their carbon footprint uh, on their process. There is one thing when we go to sustainability. Schneider, Schneider had fantastic recognition last year. We were recognized by Corporate Night at the World Economic Forum as the most sustainable company in the world. Um, all industries confounded. Thank you very much. But I think you should give yourself a round of applause because, yes, we've committed to net zero and we've taken strong commitments and we are on our way to achieve those commitments. Two weeks ago, our plan to go to net zero has been certified by SBTI. Not many companies have that in the world, but what I want to insist on is that a journey to sustainability and digitization is teamwork. Take our example. More than 99% of our carbon footprint is with our suppliers and customers. So there is no way we accomplish this journey without you. We help you progress and you help us progress. Um, there is one very important part of the culture of Schneider, which is very dear to me. We are a technology company. We focus on the part of the technology where we can bring value to you. But we want to operate, put in place our solutions, produce our technologies with suppliers, integrators, partners, and work closely. We believe that being very focused on the part of the equation where we can bring value makes the whole difference. 90%, 99% of the carbon footprint is with our partners, suppliers and integrators. Most of the quality of what we produce is with our suppliers. So what we want to, what I want to insist on is really the importance of partnership in everything we do. And for that, you are our partners, and it is so important to be together today in Vegas. And again, I want to thank you for what we are doing today, but more so for what we are going to do tomorrow. Thank you. With that, Tamer, I think I'll call you back on stage. Well, thank you, Jean-Pascal. That was great. Uh, I'm super excited that this audience got to hear from you directly. Um, and, you know, we've talked in our conversations a lot about how the technology is continuing to progress. We're a part of it, but the whole industry is doing exciting things. But real change starts with leadership intent. So I want to go back 16 years. You've just taken over as CEO of Schneider Electric, and you decide at that point that sustainability and this mission, the vision that you just shared with us that is now real, is something you want to commit the company towards. What, what made you as an individual leader decide that's what you wanted to do with the company? Look, I, I, I see we could share a lot of experience here, but um, I said it on stage, I, CEO, you have to put your company in the best tailwinds and you have to reduce all the risks that could affect you. And I realized I've been 36 years with Schneider. So it's, uh, it's been in the field of energy. You know that our industry, energy and process automation, is at the core of climate change. Because climate change is about carbon emission, and carbon emission is all about energy. So we saw at that time with my team, with our team, that we could really make a difference by taking a completely different approach uh, to a subject 
on making sure that we would build technology, especially building on the digital, uh, which was at that time barely starting in the field of things, uh, use digital to bring a level of efficiency on decarbonization that had never been done before. And then uh, you could see all the other advantages, the capacity to have a company which is more competitive because fundamentally efficiency is about uh, chasing costs and making yourself more efficient, making the company more resilient uh, because you are less affected by external events like surges of price of energy on, uh, on resources. And more so, the only thing which is important in companies is people. I mean, we say at Schneider that great people make a great company. And if you bring solutions which are towards sustainability, you will attract the best talents. And I, I always considered that my, my, my job is to work with, with, with good people, great people. And that was putting all those things together, the opportunity, um, uh, the benefit for the company, and the capacity to attract people that we move towards sustainability as a priority. And we clearly see that in the university recruits. In fact, we have some high school students from FIRST Robotics here, and that's why they're here. So that's clearly resonating. Um, you travel a lot, as you mentioned. Uh, I was, much. <laughs> I was with you. I had the privilege of being with you in Rome when you interviewed the CEO of NL. Yep. You're very active in the World Economic Forum on, on lots of committees. And of course, you meet customers, partners, suppliers all over the world. Different people here are in different stages, right? A few years ago, people hadn't even committed targets. Now, more have. As you said, many have yet to have those targets certified. When you meet the leaders that are really pushing the boundaries in this journey, what are the leaders doing that you would share as advice with our audience? I would say two things. Have a very strong intention, be decided about it, have that gut riveted conviction that sustainability and actually the future of a company are going together. On the second point, put in everything in consistency, your strategy, embedding what you do in digitization on sustainability just at the heart of your strategy. Putting into place what we are good at doing as engineers, which is KPIs, uh, change management, and technologies to uh, support it. And probably the most important at the end is embed that into the culture of the company. And you'll be really surprised by the number of ideas that all of your employees and actually your customers and partners and suppliers bring to you when they understand that you can reconcile really sustainability on economics, progress on sustainability to one equation, then you get the best of your teams. But it starts with leadership. At the end of the day, leaders have to lead, right? Yeah, and so a press release and saying, go read our ESG report doesn't cut it, right? It is a way of life. It's how you operate every day. That makes a lot of sense. Um, look, if we continue this conversation, one of the things that is happening, you mentioned Europe. Europe is over the next 18 months, unfortunately, going to have to drive technology change that without this crisis may have taken much longer. But now there's an absence of choice, so there's an urgency. Um, Asia has gone through a period of electrification. Let's talk about North America. From your perspective, what are the big trends you see and opportunities you see in North America? Look, okay, I'm very excited by uh, North America, of course, and you know how much time I spend here. I uh, actually maybe too much time. No, no, place. never, never. But um, <laughs> uh, look, first, it state the obvious. For us, this is the biggest business in the world, right? We have 33,000 people working in North America in all aspects, R&D first, uh, I would say manufacturing and so on. So everything on marketing, on services, and so on. But this is our biggest business. Second point is that North America has an opportunity because the energy density and the carbon intensity of everything which is done in North America is much above what is happening in the rest of the world. So there is potential of efficiency, and not to the detriment of quality of life. It's really to, to the advantage of your own benefits in terms of economics and uh, those kind of things. I'm really excited about what we can do at Schneider here because this is a place where we have our most advanced global R&D centers for digitization. 
speak about smart uh, infrastructure plan, developed from here, infrastructure building, developed from here, um, uh, infrastructure power, of course, developed from here. And those who've been with us for a long time know exactly where we are driving those developments, but that beyond North America. It goes, this is where we drive innovation for the world. I spoke about our development in data and in software. All of our centers have been built from North America. Most of our R&D and research is happening from here. And now I'm excited because this is a place where the regulatory in terms of energy allows to experiment a lot of things. This is a place where you can deploy smart grids, where you can do microgrid. This is a place in the world where we do the most microgrid every year and bring together all technologies for decarbonization and digitization. So I think we have a lot to do. And we have a lot to do in North America for North America, but more so in North America for the rest of the world. So you're going to see more of me. I'm sorry. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. And, and look, you know, at this moment in time, whether it's Canada, uh, United States, Mexico, there's also a once in a lifetime amount of investment and capital going in. So it is our responsibility to get it right uh, as an ecosystem, as customers, partners, suppliers. We have to make sure that this injection of capital, this reimagination of the infrastructure is done the right way, which brings us to a question that's on the minds of a lot of people here. Um, the growth you mentioned, the 4X growth in electrification, will require supply chains to scale. And the last few years have had challenges uh, for us, for the industry, almost in everything that the world makes. How do you see uh, our investments and the evolution of the supply chain environment to support this growth? Look, it's, first, uh, it's already a problem, right? Um, you all know it in this room. We've been facing huge disruptions in the supply chain. That's global. That's everywhere. But here is the same, unfortunately. And I want, again, to thank you for your understanding and working together on the issues which are happening. I'm calling uh, really our suppliers in this room to help us on that. We really need you because, you know what, we face a very strong demand and we want to serve this very strong demand. We want to keep growing and developing. On our side, uh, we're investing a lot. At the moment, we're investing, uh, as we speak, 100 million uh, US dollars into more capacity, into our plants in Nebraska, in Kentucky, in Texas. We are investing also in Mexico uh, to serve uh, the larger growth of, uh, of, uh, of Latin America. So all of this is happening together. Um, when I look, at the curves we are speaking here, we have to understand that this is not business as usual. These are inflections. The world that we are now installing, that we are now serving, is getting connected and is getting much more electrical. So we've got to put in our heads that what we have in front of us is on one side a huge opportunity, but as industrial companies, it has challenges. On the first, the thing that we human beings are not very good at is to imagine that the future will be different from the past. And it's about time to realize that we are already two years into this acceleration of transition, that we are already feeling the effects, and we've got to get tooled for those accelerations. But we are investing a lot. We are. And, you know, customers, we go all in with them. Suppliers, we want you to go all in with us because it requires that mindset shift. So, Amir, you know, I've spoken too much already, which is uh, usual uh, with me. Uh, look, you are organizing this, uh, this meeting in, in Vegas. Uh, many people have come. And again, thank you for making the time and being uh, with us today. What, what do you expect from this event? Look, you know, there's so many things that we want to talk about. But if I encapsulate our hope uh, for this event and our hope for your time that you're investing with us is three things. One, all disruptive change, and some of you who've seen me talk about this have seen me say this before, I'm gonna keep saying it again. All disruptive change goes through three phases. First, the idea is crazy, then it's dangerous, and then it's obvious. What we can assure you is if you wait till it's obvious, it is too late. It is too late for you as a supplier, it is too late for you as an integrator, it is too late for you as a distributor, and it's certainly too late for you as an end user. 
on anything, waiting till it's obvious is too late. And it's already obvious. So we have to accelerate the pace of change. And what we thought we could do in months, we have to do in weeks. What we thought we could do in years, we have to do in months. So the pace of change is accelerating, and we all have to lean in. Second, what you talked about, this is about leadership. This is not a technology problem. This is not a I'm waiting for everything to come together problem. This is a leadership intent to create culture. And you had a great line, leaders must lead. And we're asking you to do that. And third, we're looking for you to challenge us, whether it's suppliers and how can we be more effective with you, customers and partners. We are all in with you. And we're looking for you to help us be better because we can't do it alone. Well, it makes a packed program. Again, thank you for being here. I will meet many of you in the next coming two days, and I'm looking forward to that. In the meantime, you know what? I'm going to leave you the floor. Thank right? you. Thank you. Thank you, Jean Pascal. <laughs>
right? Some, like you said, I like your, uh, you know, it sounds crazy and then it's dangerous. dangerous. And obvious. Um, you know, some of what we've done sounded crazy to people, even who were, you know, longtime Moderna employees. Um, but pushing through what's possible and putting a stake in the ground to say, we're going to make the impossible happen is part of, you know, kind of the makeup of the company. Um, the other, one of the other um, mindsets that I love is acting with urgency. So we do everything with urgency. So deadlines that people had for, you know, 15 years of development for a vaccine, we did that in 11 months. Um, our target for net zero is 2030. Some of our partners and suppliers, theirs is 2040 or 2050. So we're going to be challenged to, you know, get them to move faster with more urgency because those are a couple of the mindsets that really come to mind here that um, help us kind of bring that sustainable journey to life. I, I love those. And if Nadesh Petit is here, she believes in acting with urgency as well. So we have some followers of that mindset mm -hmm. completely. Um, you know, one of the things I want to thank you for is in this process, as Moderna scales and you build new facilities, this idea that we're going to build it right, build it sustainably from day one is remarkable. And, and right now your team is assessing things like resource advisor to buy clean energy, microgrid solutions, and you're pushing us. You're pushing us because you want the technology to be better. And whatever the outcome, we love that because you're making us better in the process. So thank you for that. Thanks. Paul, I want to come to you. New York corporate real estate, not exactly the, the place where people first think, you know, breakthrough and sustainability. People think cost first, you know, it's about project delivery. Yet EQ Office and you personally for 25 plus years have been doing amazing things and making sure that this incredibly challenging space is also focused on sustainability. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I, I'm blessed. I work with an amazing group of real estate professionals and there's some of them in the off audience today. Um, it's intrinsic in how our company, our core values are around ESG, but adding value because I really believe that um, ESG and all of the things on sustainability adds value to real estate. It, it attracts more diverse tenants. It attracts stronger tenants. They demand it. We um, work very closely with our tenants to make a difference. And I think cult culturally in our company, it starts with our people. They believe it. They act it. They live it in their personal lives. And I think all of us could make a difference. Even you were talking about somebody's home. We, we think the office is part of somebody's home, right? We, we Our buildings act like it. We give them comfort. We provide a bunch of services that some, some other commercial real estate owners do not. Um, we've been forced to actually think outside of the box, especially during COVID. A lot of our people have come back on hybrid, but for us, we, we never stopped working. And to be better, just personally, the way you operate a business is so important. And every one of us could make a difference, even if it's small, by walking out of an office and turning off a light or not having or not running the water longer than you have to. So little changes make big impact. Now, as you did this, you're a Blackstone company. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm sure they said, look, Paul, spend all the money you want. Don't worry about operating costs. <laughs> Just, you know, make it awesome, make it sustainable. But we don't really care about the operating brass tacks, right? That's exactly how that played out? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it, it, it's funny because everyone, everyone thinks that we have an open checkbook. We've spent $27 million on capital projects. We've done them efficiently. We look at sustainable, sustainable initiatives. And Schneider's been a big help in us doing a lot of those. Some of the things that we've been able to do, over 70% of our portfolio is green power, sustainable electric. Our teams have worked very hard with you guys to do that. The other piece of this is that over 47, you, you talked about it yesterday, we've been out in the forefront of making sure that we do the right thing. And reducing, we always talk, and, and, and the guys are gonna laugh, but we looked at reducing energy expenses. We never really thought about what impact it had on the environment. 
And now it's at the forefront of everything right. we do. We want to reduce operating expenses, but it, it, there's a, a correlation between us reducing operating expenses and an impact on the environment. What I was struck by in EQ Office's portfolio is every year for the last few years, they've delivered 10% reduction in electricity sure. usage. 42 of your buildings are platinum and LEED certified, and sure. you have a roadmap for more. And 70% of your buildings are using green energy already in corporate real estate, which is one of the most challenging low margin uh, processes out there. So it is about intent, and I, I really value that. Um, a question for both of you. So we talked about scope three, and scope three requires us engaging with our customers, our partners. Basically, the biggest part of the problem, we cannot solve alone. Um, so tell us a little bit about how you think about partnerships, and Debbie, I'll start with you. Yeah, we're not much different than uh, Schneider that our majority of our emissions are from our scope three, whether that's raw materials and capital goods or the downstream uh, of products as well. But partnerships are the key. And some of that is you know, coming to things like this and learning from others in other industries of what's working and how do we take those great ideas back in house. Uh, some of it is working within the pharmaceutical industry. So we participate in a number of forums to try to you know, benchmark with peers and find out who's doing what and somebody has a great idea, we wanna try it. Um, I think one of the things that's unique about Moderna is we're small, so we're able to you know, be an incubator for an idea and try something that might be a little crazy to some others in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, and part of why I came to this conference is hopefully to meet some folks who can help us solve some of our scope one uh, challenges. And maybe there's some great ideas in the innovation hub that I can take home and figure out how to implement. You're going to have a queue coming to come <laughs> talk to you. Paul, same question for you. That's on you. <laughs> I, I'm going to leave that, that, that bucket for Schneider to help us with. No, the reality is, is that um, our tenants are partners of ours. There's a, a, a correlation with how they operate their businesses and how, how we operate our buildings. We could provide safe places to work. We could do all of the things, but the way they operate their business has a direct effect on how much energy and how much consumption a building has. So for us to work with our tenants, have a collective roadmap to, to reducing energy is, is very important. And our teams do an amazing job with that. My engineering group is is phenomenal. They work very close with you guys. No, and we love working with them. I, I, I met some of them earlier uh, in the week. I'll stay with you, Paul, and then I'll come back to Debbie. So there are a lot of system integrators in the room. There are a lot of suppliers in the room. There are a lot of technology providers and startups. What, when you sit down with your team and say, we need a new partner, what does a good partner look like? What are you looking from them? I, I always think that in a partnership, it's a two-way street, right? The, you're going to have some bumps in the road, but it's how you get through those that's very important. I don't think any relationship is perfect, but I think how you develop them and how you guide, how we all have, we all have the same common goal, right? And if we have the same common goal and we're working for something that's better, you, you don't lose. And, and we don't lose very often, but it's because of how hard they work. And then I expect that from my partners too. You know, Jean Pascal said a trust. 100%. Trust is a big part of that equation. I, I agree. Debbie? Yeah, I was going to just jump on. I saw that in Jean Pascal's uh, trust and transparency and, and really um, working collaboratively with us. We all have the same goal in mind of how do we get to net zero. Um, I think where we struggle just a little bit is the timing is a little off. So some companies have net zero by 2030, some are 2035, some are 2040. There's a few 2050s out there. So really trying to galvanize around the dates to say, hey, how do we accelerate and move faster is one area that I would say to my partners, hey, we want you to move at, at Moderna speed. Push fast <laughs> Push possible. Push fast possible and go a little act with more urgency. Um, but really, you know, being open, transparent and uh, building that relationship is, is key to making uh, this decarbonizing journey together. Yeah. You know, 2030, eight years away, um, You've been practitioners and leaders, both been recognized by your various industries. If you were to go back eight years and give yourself some advice, you know, what do you wish you had done to start sooner? Uh, what advice would you give yourself? Well, um, those folks who know me well know I'm not someone who gives up easy, so I keep that, um, keep that moving, keep pushing. So for those of you who might be um, knocking on a closed door at the top, 
keep pushing and pushing and pushing because it will open and uh, it be ready when that moment happens. Uh, here at you know joining Moderna, I joined the company in January of this year, and it was in November of last year when we announced we're going to be 20, uh, net zero by 2030. So when I came, I felt um, a little pressure that, wow, I'm already five years behind. Um, but it's terrific to be in a company that that folks at the top are you know pulling this along rather than always being pushing. But don't give up. If you're one of those folks that really is still pushing and trying to convince leadership this is the right thing to do, do not give up. They'll get there eventually. I love what you said when we were talking about this earlier. Leadership will get there. Your job is to help them get there faster. I, yeah. I, I love that line. Advice for eight year old or eight years ago, Paul. Not eight year old. <laughs> I probably wouldn't stick my foot in my mouth so much. <laughs> but no, I, I think when he said that, I started laughing because I probably wouldn't have done all the retrofit projects I did to convert to steam and other u utility sources. I, I would probably stayed on the grid, right? But I think looking at all where we are today, um, I, I would continue to just push the envelope on, on what you can do in a, in a commercial office building or in any, any real estate project, right? Retrofitting existing equipment with technology and the, and the best processes really help us get better. Well, listen, both of you continue to inspire. Uh, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for Moderna for everything you've done to allow us to get back to normal. And thank you, Paul, for creating spaces that we want to come back to. Thank you. So thank you both thank very you. much. Thanks very much. Thank you, Marie Jo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, what strikes me about both of these stories is you have a small company that literally is going through stratospheric growth, solving existential problems for the world, literally saving the world. And yet in the middle of that, they can find the time to say sustainability is a core priority. We're going to get it right. We're going to invest in it. We're not just going to hit our targets. We are going to be a leader in our industry because it is that important. Now think about what's happening in your company. Think about how you're impacting the world. And think about the voice in your head that says, no, we have a competing agenda getting in the way. If Moderna isn't letting it get in the way and they're pushing fast possible, why aren't you? Think about what Paul said, real estate. Historically, we don't change. It's all about capital cost. We have really thin margins. Those of you where that resonates as reasons why not, here's a company that's doing it. And trust me when I say Blackstone likes to get their money back. <laughs> we know on multiple levels, I'll leave it at that. Um, so if they can do it, it does start with leadership intent. It's not a technology problem. The technology is here. There's more coming. There's an ecosystem of partners building amazing things. But leaders have to put it into practice. It's not real until we make it real. So speaking of technology, we are excited that we're continuing to innovate. That is a big part of who we are. You can count on us for that. And I want to take a moment to give you a sense of some of the greatest and newest technologies, both in hardware, software, and services that we're bringing to market. So let's take a look at our world premiere of our new technologies. There is one equation for the future. Digital plus electric equals sustainable, and we must take steps towards solving for it today. Introducing the latest innovations launching from Schneider Electric and our software partners that will help propel us toward our future goals and support our collective journey to net zero at every stage of the project lifecycle. Let's start with design. One in every four buildings in North America has oversized electrical equipment, wasting money and energy. Advanced electric design for Autodesk Revit by BIM Electric creates a collaborative digital environment where engineers can right-size equipment to avoid wasted energy. Now, once you're ready to build, during construction, RIB Carbon Quantifier calculates and improves your building's carbon impact using the industry's largest databases. And when your building is in operation, digital tools make energy management smarter. EcoStructure Energy Hub digitalizes your building's infrastructure, 
to make it more sustainable and help ensure code compliance. By automatically collecting, storing, and reporting energy use within your facility, it helps you optimize power and improve productivity. In the electrical room, the heart of your facility, EvoPact, a groundbreaking new circuit breaker, gives you more of the most valuable commodities in manufacturing, including space. EvoPact's compact design means more revenue generating space for you and a smaller carbon footprint for the environment. And to better protect your people and equipment, ArcBlock 2500 helps prevent, isolate, and mitigate arc events. ArcBlock also has a low carbon footprint and the longest life cycle of any arc flash protection solution on the market. On the factory floor, the center of operations, EcoStructure Power and Process unifies your electrical and automation systems data to help your facility's assets work in harmony for improved productivity and sustainability. And to keep you operating at the edge, let's look at a solution for more resilient data centers. With EcoCare membership, you gain a trusted ally with comprehensive knowledge of the unique systems that power your business so that you can minimize downtime, maximize operational efficiency, safety, and contribute to a smaller carbon footprint. Now, let's bring that efficiency home. The next generation Wiser Energy Power Monitor makes EV charging integration easier and gives homeowners access to real-time monitoring so they can make more energy efficient decisions. These innovations are ready today so you can make an impact now through more digital, sustainable, resilient solutions. Visit the Innovation Hub to discover it all. So the technology is here. It's actually in the hall in the Innovation Hub. Um, spend some time and dig into the problems you want to solve. My ask of you over the next day and a half together is just be here. I know the world out there is busy and noisy. I know all of you have incredible responsibilities. But be here. Be present. Be in the moment. Focus on the challenges we have to solve together. We have expert panels. We have sessions where we can connect you with people who are solving the same problem because nobody in this room has a problem and somebody else in this room also doesn't have, which is a good thing because we can work together to solve them faster. We can push past possible and have urgency together. So spend that time. Challenge us. Challenge what partnerships and solutions we're bringing to you. Talk to us about where we can do better. Tell us where we have it wrong, because we will go back and continue to innovate on your behalf. We could not be happier that all of you are with us. We're excited about the next day and a half. On behalf of the Schneider team, we're looking forward to spending time with all of you. So go out there and make the most of your time. Thank you very much. Let's do this together.